Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. Welcome back yet again, everybody. We are back with another video today on my day off on a fragrance that in my opinion has a ton of hype coming into this right here. And I think that this is the perfect time to talk about why this fragrance is hyped and what you guys can expect Troy D style. Now about a month ago, I heard some rumblings in the community about this fragrance, this 2022 fragrance from the house of Stephen Humbert Lucas that really is catching a lot of hype. A lot of people are saying it's the best of all time. It's the best in their entire collection out of everything they've tried, just one or two tries it's automatically the best. And a lot of people are saying, hey, you know what? Get it before the hype explodes, basically. And so, of course, I followed the advice just like catching twisters. I followed the twister and I said, hey, there's hype right there. There wouldn't be a no hype review channel without hype. So I got a sample as soon as I could. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Guys, we're like, what, 50? 50 subs to go to 12,000. So please help the channel, guys. Support the channel if you've already done so. Thank you so much. But I mean, if you are into no hype reviews, I've got 500 videos. 500 videos of no hype reviews on fragrances you guys wanna hear about. It's all right here, so please like and subscribe. Now the fragrance that we are gonna talk about today is none other than Stephen Humbert Lucas. Got a fire, yes, got a fire right here and I'm sure you guys and gals are excited to hear about this. If you've heard about the hype, yes, a lot of people are freaking hyped about God of Fire. Now this fragrance, God of Fire, on top of the hype, this fragrance really reels you in in many, many ways. First and foremost, let's look at the bottle right there. This is the same bottle design as Mortal Skin, you know, which is one of the most amazing SLH uh, fragrances ever. I do have a review for that that I will link at the end of this video. But more importantly, not only is it the same bottle, but Stephen Humbert Lucas added like six of these to his Serpent Collection. It's now called the Serpent Collection because he really took full advantage of the bottle design. But also there are different colorways. So this is the blue one. I do have the red one, Venom Incarnate. I have not tried that. I will, I promise. But man, you've got six fragrances with a bottle design of SLH Mortal Skin with different colorways as if Stephen Humbert Lucas learned from Nike, you know, changing up the colorways and making it interesting. And then of course, you've got the name God of Fire. Jeez, God of Fire? What would that be in a perfume? Is there any link to God of Fire? We will find that out today, guys, I promise. And we will also find out why it's so damn good to a lot of people and that they are already raising the hype on this fragrance. How did this fragrance, God of Fire, create worshipers? We've got worshipers of the God of Fire. We've got the brethren, if you will. How did God of Fire get a lot of hype? What is this fragrance really about? That is what we are going to answer today. So let's go spray this thing right now. Mm. Okay, guys, let's get into God of Fire. Let's look into the opening notes, guys, shall we? We've got lemon, we've got ginger, we've got mango, and we've got red berry that, in my opinion, is strawberry. The fragrance starts off with lemon and ginger, and that on its own lasts for maybe three minutes, okay? So it's going to be lemon and ginger. The ginger, in my opinion, sets the tone, the backdrop that makes this fragrance unisex and wearable by a man. And I'm saying that because three minutes in, you're gonna get this mango berry combination. You've got the mango and the red berry, the strawberry, coming in together really right after, like three minutes after that lemon ginger combination. Now I know what you're thinking guys, when you think of mango, you're thinking about that fragrance I reviewed a couple weeks ago, Cruz del Sur 2, yes. And maybe you're thinking that there is a tropical nature into the mango right here. Now how would I describe this right here? First and foremost, the mango and the berry come together at the same time guys. So in Cruz del Sur 2, the mango came with the guava to give it a photorealistic feel of a mango. But right here, no, this one right here has mango, red berry, and lemon as well. I would describe this as a mango berry lemonade slush, okay? It's like a slush. It's like you put together mango, strawberry, and lemon into maybe like a juice. And that is what you get at the intro 
of God of Fire. Now with fruity fragrances, the big concern, especially by the guys, is that is this fragrance gonna lean femme? Because there are a lot of fruity fragrances that lean femme. In my opinion, that's really not the case. Why? Because of the ginger. The ginger is actually a big part of this opener right here that curves it into non-super femme territory or non-femme territory because you've got the ginger right there and you can smell the zing as you are smelling the mango berry lemon combination. And also after trying multiple perfumes with strawberry or red berry, in my opinion, the red berry, much like the ginger, is also a curve to that mango. It curves the mango so that it doesn't go full on tropical, super sweet. The red berries are there as a thick curve as well as the ginger. And that, in my opinion, makes this fragrance more unisex than femme. Now, what do I think about this opening? This opening is lovely, not only for the wearer, but also for the people around you, okay? The strength of this opener, pretty damn strong. It's more than an aura scent, in my opinion, but I think that for the wearer, it's like, wow, it's a beautiful, wonderful, in my opinion, masculine fruity like opener. And I think that because you are gonna get different fruits from citrus to berries to mango, I think that you're gonna enjoy this because all these fruity scents are kind of lingering with the backdrop of ginger right there that again, keeps it unisex or in my opinion, keeps it masculine. So it's a beautiful fruity masculine intro. Now, if you've tried this fragrance, maybe you've tried a sample of this or maybe right now you're hearing me out and you're like, man, theoretically, this sounds like a really, really good fragrance. If you like what I've said, if you like this opening, just like theoretically by hearing the scent development, let me tell you that this opener lasts for three hours. Okay, it lasts for three hours. So that is a significant amount of time in my opinion when it comes to opening notes because usually they do change in about one and a half hours. It can be more than two, but right here guys, this one is really strong, strong sillage, long lasting. It lasts three hours right here. In my opinion, the masculine fruity opener right here will garner you a lot of compliments. There's no way it's not gonna get you compliments. I think in my opinion, the whole compliment factor of a fragrance is pretty cut and dry, like it's not that complicated. Some fragrances are just artsier than others and so some people that are around you might not really like interpret it the right way. But this one right here is very easy to interpret because you got mango, you got lemon, you've got ginger and red berries. Anybody around you in my opinion will compliment you and will say, wow, that smells good because like I said, it's very easy to understand all factory wise. And of course it is a mood enhancer as well because it smells so damn good. Now let's look into the mid of God of Fire and this mid is a huge part of God of Fire right here. It's a huge part of why people love this fragrance. And if you haven't figured it out, I'm going to tell you guys about this because when I smelled this fragrance, right when it went into the mid three hours in after experiences that beautiful fruity stage, I was just like, dude, I know this. I know this fragrance right here. Like I don't really need to look it up, but I'm gonna look it up anyways. Guess what? God of Fire pretty much has the same exact mid as MFK's Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra oh. Departure. Yes, it's the same exact mid. And in the Baccarat world, they did talk about this part as the crushed rubies part. If you look at Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra de Parfum, you know that the mid has bitter almond, jasmine, and cedar right here. And it's pretty much the same. Only difference, it's coumarin, but the coumarin also has an almond-like smell. And without a doubt, in my opinion, this was placed right here to add a one-two punch. The jab would be the mango and the berries, and then boom, Baccarat mid right here. So yes, God of Fire shares the same exact mid as Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra de Parfum. And how long does this mid last? Seven hours. Seven long hours. So this fragrance, it's like you bought Baccarat. It's like you added Baccarat in your collection, of course, minus the saffron. But the crushed rubies part of Baccarat is in this one. It is in God of Fire and it lasts seven hours. 
pretty much the same as another perfume. Like that's how long some fragrances last on their own, like Elysium. The sillage of the mid is strong as well. You are going to get a scent trail from this. And that is why this fragrance is loved by many and why the hype is brewing on this one. You've got two major components that are very easy to understand, very easy to interpret, easily complement getting the mango berry combination, the baccarat combination, easily a head turner, easily a complement getter in this fragrance, two in one, and it lasts a total of 10 hours. That's minus even the dry down. So you are gonna get a significant scent of both these components and that is why a lot of people really do like it. Now here's a big question, where's the oud? <laughs> All right, where's the oud? I know a lot of y'all when you saw this note breakdown, you're like, man, there's oud, oh my God, where does this go? Does it go into Middle Eastern type oud, whatever? So let me go clarify that. So first and foremost, guys, you've got 10 hours of this combination, like I said, which is the majority part of this fragrance. Now, what you are gonna get in the end, in the dry down, is basically the continuation of amber, the sweetness of amber that continues from all the sweetness you got from that Baccarat Extrait Mid. And when it comes to the Oud and Cipriol oil, in my opinion, this is just a dark, earthy, woody component that bridges into the end. And then you've got musk to really create a sensual dry down with the amber. We already know this, a sweet musk dry down with some earthiness from the oud and the cypriol oil. Now let me tell you that the oud here is not barnyard or animalic or even strong. It's a well-blended oud with the cypriol oil. So again, it's just earthy and woody with amber musk. It's a nice dry down, but I don't think it's a significant part of this fragrance because like I said, this fragrance does perform start to mid for 10 hours or even more actually. It's a nice fade to black, sensual, sweet dry down with continuity but it's not really gonna tell you what the fragrance is really all about. In my opinion, this fragrance shouldn't be called God of Fire. In my opinion, this should be called God of Compliments, okay? This should be called God of Compliments because in my opinion, like I said, this is a super compliment getting perfume. And what I like about this fragrance is that it is an upscale grabber that I can use anytime, anywhere, in any weather. And that's because of the boosted sillage right here from this fragrance and that it is really super balanced. The mango doesn't lean too tropical. You've got red berries and ginger to curve it. And as you guys know, Baccarat Extrait is not a fall only perfume. You can wear this anytime you want. And with that central, that unique sweet crushed red berry central, you are gonna get compliments yet again and you will get some head turners. Actually, it's funny, here in LA, a lot of people wear Baccarat Rouge and whenever I walk around and I smell it from somebody passing by, I literally turn my head, even if I know it's Baccarat Rouge because when I turn, I'm gonna see that person who actually has that grin, who's thinking, yeah, I just made that guy's head turn. And that's the same thing you're gonna get with God of Fire. I think by buying God of Fire, you are gonna have that little grin. You're gonna be like, yeah, this is my God of compliments. This is gonna get you guys today. And I feel like it's the same with Baccarat. With God of Fire, you're gonna have that grin. And to be honest, you're not gonna have a lot of people that actually wear the same thing because this one has that mango red berry component in the beginning that differentiates it from Baccarat right here. Longevity wise, this fragrance lasts over 12 hours. Without a doubt, this is a pretty long lasting fragrance with a strong sillage significant scent of over nine hours. So it's real strong guys. A lot of people will definitely smell you with this. And with the amazing marketing of this product right here with the blue bottle, the mortal skin bottle, part of the Serpent Collection. I think that a lot of people are gonna get drawn into maybe blind buying this fragrance. So at least now you know what is in this fragrance. So you're not gonna get like shocked when you get this fragrance. And especially I think if you expect something that is related to God of Fire, definitely you're not gonna get anything that relates to God of Fire. Like I said, we could just call this God of Compliments. This is not a God of Fire perfume. It is really not. I don't think it relates to it at all. And that's where I can see some negativity on this fragrance. If somebody actually blind bought it 
thinking that this fragrance would make you smell like Thor. And then when they get it, they get this fruity fragrance and they're like, damn, this is not what I thought. So I can see that happening. So that is why I'm already giving you guys a heads up with this video right here. It is not related to God of Fire at all. Also, this fragrance, I would say, is a mainstream released by Stephen Humbert Lucas. It's definitely much different than the other ones. And so far, I have reviewed Ohira as well as Mortal Skin. These are very like artisan, like really niche perfume examples that I think if you're into niche perfumery, you're gonna be like, damn, masterpiece, super damn amazing blend. Like that would be your reaction. This one right here, God of Fire, leans more to the mainstream. And hopefully, Stephen Humbert Lucas isn't labeled as a sellout by a lot of these niche perfumery guys. Hey, he released six perfumes. This is just one of them. I don't know much about the others, but I will collect them at some point. You don't have to be a niche collector to like this fragrance. It's pretty cut and dry. It's got the keys to success as to why this fragrance is very loved, why it's hyped, why it gets a lot of compliments. If you're a hardcore Stephen Humbert Lucas fan, a real niche head, maybe this won't appeal to you as much as a mainstream collector that cares more about compliments, that cares more about performance, as well as, you know, a good uplifting feeling while wearing perfume. Ultimately, I like God of Compliments. I mean, God of Fire. I like God of Fire right here. This is a great perfume to actually try, and I hope you guys can actually try it. I got this from Niche Decants, again, from Europe, and the thing about him is that this is, I believe, his second bottle of God of Fire. That's how quick his decants are going. So hopefully you guys can find uh, some decants of this. I think nicheperfumes.net in Europe also has uh, decants of this available. And with that being said, do not blind buy this fragrance. Try it first because it is not linked to God of Fire. Although it is an amazing smelling fragrance, try it first or watch this video because I try to describe it as best as I could before you buy it. Okay, so that is it. That is my review on Stephen Humbert Lucas. God of Fire, man, I'm excited about this. I wanna try the entire Serpent Collection right here. The second will be Venom Incarnate, the red bottle. I've got that one. I'm gonna try that today, guys. So I'm excited about that as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Stephen Humbert Lucas, God of Fire. Did you guys like it? Is it really the best in your collection? Well, damn, I think it should be. I mean, you've got Mango Berry with Baccarat. Shoot, that is an amazing blend right there. So let me know what you think when you've tried it. Were you shocked that it had nothing to do with the God of Fire? Let me know on the comments as well. And I will come back with a few more videos this coming week or next week. I have a lot of things I'm trying and I know that the real versus clone is back. So if you're happy about that, thank you. And if you haven't done so, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. It's a big help to the channel. It's free for you guys to do that. Just liking, subscribing. This one right here was procured because of that income that we got on YouTube, guys. So all this income I'm getting, I'm really using into procuring more samples as soon as I can so I can review a lot of the most hype fragrances out there. All right, that is it. I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Take care. Peace.